Psalms 35, I'm going to read several verses here. The Bible says in verse number 1, Plead my cause, O Lord, with them that strive with me. Fight against them that fight against me. Take hold of shield and buckler and stand up for mine help. Draw out also the spear and stop the way against them that persecute me. Say unto my soul, I am thy salvation. Let them be confounded and put to shame that seek after my soul. Let them be turned back and brought to confusion that devise my hurt. Let them be as chaff before the wind and to let the angel of the Lord chase them. Let their way be dark and slippery and let the angel of the Lord persecute them. For without cause have they hid for me their net in a pit, which without cause they have digged for my soul. Let destruction come upon him at unawares, and let his net that he hath hid catch himself into that very destruction, let him fall. And my soul shall be joyful in the Lord, it shall rejoice in his salvation. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you for the good singing. We thank you for the good fellowship we've had with your people. We thank you, Lord, for the good Sunday school hour. And we thank you, Lord, we're in the house of God today. Now, Father, I pray you would bless these dear folks have, Lord, assembled here today. Many of them are, uh, had to overcome obstacles. And, Lord, no one has enough time these days. And many of them are facing uh, things in their life, and they need some help. And so, Father, I pray for the next few minutes you'd put a hedge about us, and I pray you'd manifest your presence, and I pray that you'd help everyone in attendance today. I pray for those that are saved. God, you would certainly do something in their heart and life that draws them closer to thee. I pray that you would edify them, you'd encourage them in the good things of God, you'd build their faith up, and I pray you would bless them abundantly and send revival to their soul. I pray for those in our attendance that are not saved. I pray that, Lord, they'd see you high and lifted up. They'd realize what is truly missing from their life, and that is you. And, Father, I pray that, Lord, they would look to thee by faith and repent and trust Christ as Savior even this very hour. Now, Father, I pray that, Lord, uh, you would bind the powers of hell, and I pray that you'd use this unworthy vessel... And I pray that, Lord, uh, when the final amen is uh, said in this service, we would leave out, uh, Lord, excited about the things of God and giving a message like those shepherds did some 2,000 years ago about what they'd seen and heard. Now, Father, have your will and way amongst us. Lord, do for us what we cannot do for ourselves and get glory to your name, and we'll thank you for it. For it's in the wonderful and holy name of Jesus we do pray. Amen. Amen. In this psalm, David is on the run. David is fleeing for his very life. David, who is an unusual character, he was the youngest of all his brethren. He was the one who was to tend the father's sheep. And back in those days, about the worst job you could have would be tending the father's sheep. There were much uh, uh, better jobs, better chores, better things to do, but David uh, uh, was uh, the one who was uh, tending his father's sheep. And uh, David was so insignificant that when the man of God came to David's father's house and said, Call your sons, uh, God's going to anoint the next king from your family. Uh, they called all the sons but David, uh, the man of God, uh, praying over each one, looking at each one, uh, had been told of God, not look on his countenance, don't look on his statutes, uh, for a man, uh, God seeth not as man seeth, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. Uh, and the man of God, uh, uh, addressing each of Jesse's sons, uh, looks at Jesse and said, Do you have any more? He said, Well, I just got one shepherd boy. He said, Bring him. And when he showed up, uh, the man of God said, This is the one. Uh, 
we find uh, 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 the giant comes uh, and the armies of the Philistines come uh, and set themselves in a rare battle against uh, 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 the mighty army of Israel who was so mighty they cowered down and was afraid to approach them. The giant said, just give me one man. Uh, uh, just take out the giant and we'll worship you. Uh, and they were afraid for 40 days and 40 nights. Uh, not David's father, Jesse, says, David, go down there and take some supplies to your brother and get a report on the battle. He goes and sees his brothers. Uh, here's this uncircumcised Philistine, this giant of a man, uh, uh, cussing and defying the armies of God and cussing God. Uh, and David had a little bit of grit in his soul. Uh, he said, who is this man who defieth God? Uh, is there not a cause? Uh, and nobody else would fight the giant. He said, I'll take him on. Hmm. You know the story, the king tried to put his armor on David. The king himself was head and shoulders bigger than anybody in Israel. Uh, and uh, his armor looked on David like my coat would look on one of these children. Uh, it didn't fit. Uh, moreover, David hadn't proved that. Uh, David said, I'll take that which I've proven. You know why the Bible's important? Uh, it's been proven. Uh, and if you put it in your life uh, and you let it uh, uh, prove itself in your life, uh, no matter how big or small of a giant or obstacle you face, uh, the word of God will propel you through it. Uh, you know, David defeated the giant that day, uh, and David became known as the champion of Israel. Uh, everywhere that he went, uh, they heralded his name. There was a big problem. Uh, 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 he came into Israel after a battle one time, and they're crying out, Saul, the king of Israel, has his thousands, but David is tens of thousands. And Saul, the king, got a little jealous. Now David never went and told Saul that he'd been anointed to be the next king. David served the king. David refused uh, to bring any shame on the king. David loved God. He loved his nation. Uh, and he served and was a great warrior. But the king got jealous. And the king sought his life. And rather than David taking the king's life and uh, 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 taking his position in the throne, David fled from the palace. And David's on the run. They're hunting him. Words out. If you find David, let me know, the king said. And the king sought to kill David. And in this psalm, we find him on the run. We find them seeking his life without cause. We find David dwelling in dens and caves, hiding out just for his own very life's sake. You see, a lot of times when we read the Bible, we see David the king, we see David the giant killer. We don't focus on David in the dark days. Amen. We come to the house of God, we're dressed nice. We see folks come in, they're driving nice vehicles, they live in nice houses, they dress nice. We see all the glam and glitter. We don't see the dark things they go through. Amen. I want to notice, you notice some things in these verses. David's in derision. He's seeking the Lord's help. I've got good news. When you're in derision, the Lord is a great helper. The psalmist said, I'll look unto the hills from which cometh my help. And the Bible says the Lord is a present help in time of trouble. And I'm thankful we've got a helper today. Notice David beseeches the Lord and requests God, first of all, to go to battle for him. He says in verse number one, Plead my cause, O Lord with them that strive with me. Fight against them that fight against me. Take hold of shield and buckler and stand up for mine help. Draw out also the spear and stop the way against them that persecute me. Say unto my soul, I am thy salvation. David's in dark place. David has uh, uh, lost the strength to even fight for himself and he's pleading for God to do the fighting for him. And he asked God, he said, even say to my soul, I am thy salvation. David's hurting. David's in a bad place, and David is pleading for the Lord to go to battle with him. I don't know if you've ever been there, but boy, I, there's been times I fought, felt like the whole world's against me. Uh, there's been times when I felt like I couldn't put one foot in front of the other, uh, and I've had to say, God, help me. Uh, and I'm glad he is that wonderful help that I spoke about a minute ago. We see him asking God to go to battle for him. We also see... Him asking God to beset his enemy. Look in verse uh, number four. Let them be confounded 
and put to shame that seek after my soul. Let them be turned back and brought to confusion that devise my hurt. Let them be as chaff before the wind and let the angel of the Lord chase them. He's asking the Lord to beset them. You know, the Bible is a wonderful, wonderful book. It was written of God and it tells how God has worked in the lives of men. I've read in there about other battles where two different nations come to fight against Israel and Israel wasn't equipped to fight one of them, let alone both of them. The Lord stepped in. The Lord brought uh, 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 those uh, 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 other nations to confusion and they started fighting amongst themselves and they killed one another and Israel didn't even have to fight. Can I say we got a great God? He works in mysterious ways. And can I help you something? If it's much too big for you, it's not too big for Him. And David is asking God to confuse his enemy, to, uh, to uh, uh, turn them back and to seek the angel of the Lord on them and chase them. Now, I caution you, every time in the Old Testament you read about the angel of the Lord, most of the time it's talking about the Lord Jesus himself. He's asking for God to show up and chase his enemy. Now, I want you to notice also the basis for his request. Why is David requesting God to chase his enemies and to defeat his enemies? Look with me in verse number 7. The Bible says, For without cause have they hid from me their net in a pit, which without cause they have digged for my soul. Can I say something today? You can strive to do your best to live a Christian life, to be good to people, to uh, certainly uh, uh, live right, do right. And in just doing that, you can tick people off. You know, if on the job, some of your coworkers get to talking about cussing and carousing around and drinking the weekend away and all that, and they look at you and want you to chime in, uh, and all you have to do is say, no, I go to church, you'll make them matter in a wet hen. You know, in the community, uh, if somebody tells you this time of year, happy holidays, and you look at them and say, Merry Christmas, you can make people mad. Just say, Merry Christmas. Hmm. Can I say, it's one thing to make people mad, but there are some people who take a step farther. They get so mad at you without a cause, they even want to seek revenge. Can I say, just living right, there are people out there who will hate you without a cause. Well, that's what David's facing. David didn't do anything that would cause people to seek his life, yet they did. Notice, if you will, the backfire that he desires. Look at verse 8. Let destruction come upon him at unawares, and let his net that he hath hid catch himself into that very destruction and let him fall. He's asking the Lord, he said, that pit that they've dig, and that net they've cast... Let them get caught up in it. You see, David's heard the story about that wicked man named Haman that built the gallus for Mordecai. But when the truth came out, they hung Haman on his own gallus. David saying, Lord, why don't you do that right here? Hmm? But then I want you to notice the bearing it will have on David's life. Look at verse 9. And my soul shall be joyful in the Lord... It shall rejoice in his salvation. Look at verse uh, 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 28. And my tongue shall speak of thy righteousness and of thy praise all the day long. Now, when we talk about the Psalms, the Psalms really refer a lot to praising the Lord. And when David's talking about rejoicing in the salvation of the Lord and all that, we just think that comes natural. But you've forgotten he's in a dark place. He's in a place where he's not been able to praise the Lord. He's not been able to rejoice in his salvation. He's been running for his life. Every turn, he's bumping into people that's trying to kill him. He's not been able to worship. He's not been able to rejoice. He's not been able to lift up his hands and say glory to God. He's been running for his life and he thinks everything is coming. He's like he's in quicksand. Young people Google what quicksand is. You know, used to, all the shows had quicksand. I was scared to death going to the backyard, thought there was quicksand. <laughs> Gilligan's Island had quicksand. You know what I'm saying? You know, they, they fall into quicksand. Uh, Tarzan fall into quicksand. And uh, uh, Cheated had to come and throw him a vine and pull himself out, you know? 
There's quicksand everywhere. Hmm? But the bottom line, by the way, Google that. Cheetah wasn't a, wasn't a cat. He was a monkey. Oh, You know, he just died a couple years ago. That ape lived to be about 680 years old. Huh? And by the way, they taught that ape he smoked cigarettes and drank beer. So, you know, that ain't what killed him. You know, it's genetics. Well, anyone just trying to help you. Hmm? That didn't come from no, I don't know where it came from, Miss Cindy. I don't know. That's some of that useless information that gets stored up in my head. He's in a dark place. And he's asking God to show up and help him in his dark place. You ever been in a dark place? Do you ever wonder if God would ever show up? He said, Lord, if you show up, my soul shall be joyful in the Lord. It shall rejoice in His salvation. He's saying, Lord, if you show up and help me, I'm not going to go out and brag about what a great champion I am. He said, my soul's going to rejoice in you. I'm going to praise you for your salvation. Hmm? Well, I got to reading. And in verse 9 where it said, My soul shall be joyful in the Lord. Can I say, you can face so much in life, you'll lose your joy. Now this time of year, there's a lot said and sung about joy. You can't go to Hobby Lobby. You can't go to the Hallmark shop. You can't go to Meijer. You can't go to Walmart. You can't go to that new place that is very dangerous where Toys R Us was, home buys. You can't go to any of those places where you won't find some little placard that says joy. You hear it in the songs. You see it on Hallmark. Everybody's talking about joy. Why so? Well, because the very Christmas story itself mentions joy. In Luke chapter number 2, verse 10, it says, And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Amen. Joy is a very important factor in the life of a believer. Nehemiah 8.10 says, uh, Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet, and send portions uh, unto them for whom nothing is prepared. Uh, for this day is holy unto our Lord, neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. David is in a place of derision. He's lost his strength because he's lost his joy. He says, Lord, if you show up, I'll be joyful again. Can I say the joy of the Lord is our strength? You know what unbelievers can't figure out? They seek for happiness. Yeah. Happiness uh, a lot of times is tied in with our emotions. It's tied with our circumstances. It's tied with how much money we got in the bank or what address we have or what we drive. That's what makes us happy. Our mate makes us happy. Our children make us happy. Uh, our uh, bonus on the job make us happy. Uh, but when those things go awry, we lose our happiness. You're happy when you buy that new car, but by the third payment, you're not so happy anymore. But can I say, joy's not tied with our circumstances. Joy's tied with Him. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Can I say, when the Lord is flooding your soul, they can strip you of everything you've got and you'll still have joy. You can lose happiness and still have joy as a believer. And can I say, joy is one of the very fruits of the Spirit. Galatians 5.22, but the fruit of the Spirit, the first one is love. What a blessing. When you got saved, you experienced love like you'd never experienced before. And can I say what an indictment against the church today that a lot of believers do not show love one for another or show love to a lost and dying world. Shows me they're not very spiritual. Because the very first fruit of the Spirit is love. The second is joy. Hmm. With all that in mind, I want to preach this time of year, the fruit of the Spirit, David looking for joy, Folks looking for joy, I want to preach on the spirit of joy. The spirit of joy. Joy itself has its own spirit. Hmm? 
You know, a lot of people talk about the Christmas spirit. You know what they're really looking for? The spirit of joy. Hmm? Can, I have, can I give you some good news? In Christ, you can have joy. Huh? You don't have to be down in the mully grubs. You don't have to walk on your lower lip. You can have joy today. You know what I like about this time of year? I like the spirit of joy. I really do. You know, I know Baptist preachers that preach against Christmas trees and preach against lights and all that. Fuddy duddies, I got joy. Amen. Christmas trees don't bother me. We got three in our house. They don't bother me, huh? I, I'm not bothered by the fat guy in the red suit, huh? I keep working on it. I'm going to get me a red suit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, I got the fat guy in the red suit in front of my house. He blows up every night when the timer kicks on. Huh? He's standing by a sleigh with, 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 with reindeer. Huh? You say you're wicked. I don't care. I got joy in my heart. You can call me what you want. Huh? I like it all. Because I got joy. I know why I have joy. I don't worship the guy in the red suit. I don't worship the Christmas tree. I don't worship the presents under the tree. I worship him. And there is a spirit of joy. Can I say, first of all, the spirit of joy finds its relevance in forgiveness. A lot of believers, a lot of these uh, uh, legalistic Baptist preachers, a lot of these goody two-shoes preachers uh, that preach against everything, they've forgotten the real reason I'm excited today is I've been forgiven. Uh, there's something about being saved. Uh, uh, look what David said again. Uh, and my soul shall be joyful in the Lord. It shall rejoice in what? His salvation. Uh, what is salvation? It is forgiveness uh, of our sins. Uh, my sins have been paid for by the Lord. Uh, there's joy and forgiveness. You remember the story of Zacchaeus, the children, you sing that song, Zacchaeus is we little man, we little man is he. Climbed up in the sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. Huh? And the Lord passed by his way and said, come on down, I'm going to your house today. Yeah? You know the story. But listen to what it says. Luke 19, 6. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. When you receive the Lord... You get the spirit of joy. Uh, you know what's good about revival? It brings back that which is lost. When you live in this world and you contend with this world and you contend with the flesh and you contend with the devil and you contend with Baptists, you can get to a dark place. But revival brings back that which is lost. It reminds you why you serve God in the first place because you're forgiven. And the spirit of joy finds its relevance in forgiveness. Can I say also the spirit of joy finds its relevance in fellowship. You see, before you got saved, you had no fellowship with God. You was the enemy of God. Your very sin kept you from God. But when you got forgiven and your sins were washed away, you now have a relationship with Almighty God. Can I say the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 1 9, God is faithful by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his son Jesus Christ our Lord. Being saved is more than just being forgiven. I now have fellowship with God. I have a relationship with the Creator. The Bible says in 1 John 1 3, that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. Can I say, in being saved, I have fellowship with God, but I have fellowship with the family of God. Amen. What a blessing. That's why we can come here from all different walks of life, all different levels of education, all different levels of monetary success or unsuccess. It doesn't matter because the ground is level at the foot of the cross and we can all come in here because we have the same spirit indwelling us uh, and we can have fellowship. What a blessing. Amen. That's where the spirit of joy comes in. Hmm. Can I say... Because of forgiveness and because of fellowship and because of the joyful spirit I have, that causes me to overlook your faults and causes you to overlook my faults because of the spirit of joy. I feel sorry for that crowd that's lost their joy and all they want to do is find fault. 
That's easy to do. Except when you look in the mirror. They don't find fault there. But it's easy to pick out people's faults. But the spirit of joy causes you to overlook that. So well, you don't know what they've done, but the spirit of joy causes me to have the spirit of forgiveness. And it causes me to desire the spirit of fellowship. And if somebody's out of fellowship, I want to restore them lest I also be tempted. Can I say the spirit of joy not only finds its relevance in forgiveness and fellowship, but also in furnishing or giving. The very essence of the spirit of joy is found in giving. Acts 20, 35, and I showed you all things. How that so laboring ye ought to support the weak, and remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Can I say, the spirit of joy brings about the spirit of giving. I enjoy this time of year because I get to shop and buy things for folks that they want because I want to give them to them. Miss Annette and I set a budget for each of our children, and we've blown it five times. Because <laughs> so we just want to give. Hmm? It's amazing. You ask her what she wants for Christmas, she'll tell you nothing. It's not about receiving. It's about giving. Hmm? What a blessing. That's the spirit of joy. You show me somebody that's stingy, I'll show you somebody that's not joyful. You ever heard of Scrooge? Remember when I preached on that? I preached on that one. You're bah humbug. Remember that? Huh? I still got the outline. I was looking at some of their Christmas outlines. I got some good ones. I want you to preach me. I only preach once. Remember when I preached on Happy Hanukkah, the Festival of Lights? It's in the Bible. Jesus attended it. I preached on that one year. Huh? So when I say Happy Hanukkah, people say, you're not a Jew, but I'm a Christian. Hmm? Anyway, when you're stingy, you don't have the spirit of joy. But I know folks that have nothing, but they have joy. Amen. And they'll give you what they got, which is nothing. But they'll go dig through. They'll find you some old uh, green beans they canned years ago or something. They want to give you something. Why? Because they have the spirit of joy. Sure. Hmm? Brother Mike said it the other night. When we had a missionary, he said, uh, uh, missionaries go to all these big fancy churches. They don't get much from them. They, it's, it's one of them little small churches like ours that don't have much, but we give them what we got. Hmm? It's the spirit of joy. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 9, 7, Every man, according to his purpose in the heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Hmm? When you've got the spirit of joy, you give cheerfully. Hmm? Luke 6, 38, Give, and it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall give men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. That's the beauty of God. When you give joyfully, when you give unexpectedly, when you give because of the spirit of joy, somehow God gives it back to you. Pressed down, shaken, measured over, you get more than you gave. That's just how God's economy works. I can't explain it. Now let me caution here. If you give to get, you won't get. But if you give because of the spirit of joy, it's just amazing how much it comes back to you. Back years ago when Annette and I first got married and I was in the shoe business and that sort of thing, every time we'd have a preacher come in and preach revival at our home church, I'd, I'd buy him a pair of shoes. It's amazing since I've been in the ministry full time how many people bought me shoes. It's amazing. It's amazing. Hmm? Every year church gives me a, a birthday offering. Every year I get new suits. You all buy me new This one of the suits you all bought me. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, Years ago, we used to buy people suits. Huh? It's amazing how much God gives back to you when you just give because you love and you want to give. It's amazing. Hmm? Yeah? Well, some of you are about to pass out. I ought to pass the plate right now. Huh? <laughs> Treasure over there going, amen, preacher, pass it twice. I was talking to a preacher the other day. He said, preacher's meeting, they've had to pass the plate three times. He said, it's one of them churches where they didn't just bring it to you. You had to get up and go past the plate and put something in. He said he didn't know that. So the first time through, he put everything he had in. Well, they said we didn't get enough money, so he made him come through two more times. He says, we was faking it because I didn't have anything to put in. Huh? I've never been in a church like that where you have to pass the plate. Huh? Mm. Yeah, that makes some of you shout, wouldn't it? The spirit of joy 
is found in furnishing and giving. Hmm? Can I say this? The spirit of joy is found in family. When you have God in your heart, you have a heart for family. And if you're blessed with a family, you are a blessed person. Some will celebrate this holiday without having a family. Some of their families passed away and some of their families gone. But that's why God, in the spirit of joy, knows that if you don't have a family or your family's gone or your family's disrupted. And by the way, when you got saved and you started living for God, you lost some family. When you started making stands on the Bible, you lost some family. But see, God in His infinite wisdom says He knows we need family. He knows that we need people in our lives, so God gave us a church family. Amen. And isn't it wonderful? When the whole world's going awry, there's just something about when we can come together and the Lord shows up. That just helps us. That's the spirit of joy. Huh? You show me somebody don't like coming to church, I'll show you somebody don't have the spirit of joy. Hmm? There's just something about getting with the family. Hmm? And what a blessing. Then I thought about this lastly. The spirit of joy finds its relevance in the future. Hmm? Some of these kids are just antsy to all get out because they're just excited about opening presents on Christmas morning. At the foster household, we do things different. We realize December 25th really wasn't the Lord's birthday. So we open presents when we get to the point we can't stand them being wrapped anymore. <laughs> so my kids have already started, when we open in presents, when we open in presents, when we open in presents, huh? Hmm. There's just that anticipation, that excitement about something better to come. Amen. And can I say, as believers, as much as we enjoy one another's company here, as much as we enjoy the Lord here, it doesn't hold a candle compared to what it's going to be. What a blessing. Uh, uh, Luke says this in chapter 10, verse 20, Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Uh, friend, we have a future. Uh, when God saved us, uh, when He gave us the spirit uh, of rejoicing, uh, can I say that was just the earnest of the spirit? Uh, the best is yet to come. Uh, Hey, wait till you see us over there. Hallelujah, huh? Amen. We can rejoice in knowing no matter how bad it gets here, the trumpet's going to sound someday. And we're going to the house. Hmm? What a blessing to have a future that he's gone to prepare. What a blessing to know that this isn't the end, but just the beginning. What a blessing to know that once we get over there, everything is going to be perfect and all the wrongs are going to be righted. Hmm? Can you imagine Christmas in heaven? Hmm? I've been to Disney World at Christmas. They do it pretty good. Can't imagine what it's like in heaven. Because it's like that every day because there's only one day. Just being around Him. Celebrate Him. Can you imagine the light in heaven? Can you imagine the glory in heaven? Can you imagine the Christmas caroling in heaven? Can you imagine the celebration in heaven? Can you imagine the gifts in heaven? Say, so what are we going to unwrap? Wait, wait till you get over there. You're going to see family reunions. You're going to have a hymn. You're going to have all the blessings of God. I mean, wait till we get there. When the half that's not been told is made known. Oh, a future that we have. That causes a spirit of rejoicing. Huh? Now listen. In our flesh, we don't want to die. I'm longing to go to heaven. I just don't want to go right now. You got that feeling? Right, right. But I'm glad I'm ready to go. But I do know one day, what's beyond the grave, oh, it's something to behold. Hmm? And the older I get, and the more I slow down, and the closer I get to Alzheimer's and wearing diapers and all those things, oh, heaven sounded pretty good. You know what I'm saying? Huh? Phil, it's going to happen. You've already lost your hair. Man, you're, you're ahead of me. Huh? Think about it. Now they make diapers that are pretty. They have commercials. Who cares? They're diapers. That's not a good thing. 
Huh. Future's looking pretty good. When you get to thinking of what's beyond what we see. And there's a spirit of joy. Knowing that glory is coming. Let me ask you this question. How long has it been that you've rejoiced in your salvation? How long has it been that you've been joyful of heart? Maybe you just need to ask the Lord to help you like David did. That's all David is asking for the Lord to return the joy of his salvation. He's in a dark place. Might be in a dark place today. I've got good news. The same Lord that helped David will help you. It amazes me how God puts things together. Brother Tommy, when he opened in prayer, asked for joy. Miss Brittany sang, and she sang, and it talked about rejoicing. That when he's four days late, he's still on time. It amazes me that the choir sang, My, 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 what a joy to serve my... It seems like everything today has been geared toward restoring joy. Do you have the spirit of joy? If not, why don't you ask the Lord to restore it today? Life's too short not to have joy. Joy will get you through a lot of them obstacles, a lot of them dark times. Joy will help you. Maybe you need to think about what you received when you got saved. Forgiveness. Oh, what a blessing. Fellowship. Maybe those things help restore your joy. And maybe you're here today and you don't know the Lord. You don't know what joy is. Oh, you know what happiness is. You also know what heartache is. But you don't know joy. And I've got good news. He came to give us joy. He came to give us life and life more abundantly. And even in the midst of your heartache, when you feel like you can't breathe, He can touch your heart and restore your joy. And he'll help you get through your heartache. You see, unsaved people, they don't know how to deal with heartache. That's why so many of them commit suicide this time of year. That's why so many of them uh, just shut themselves up and become hermits. Because they can't deal with life. But thanks be unto God for joy that helps us have a good life and hope for a better life. If you're here today and you're not saved, you can be saved today. You'll come and give your heart and life to the Lord. And you'll experience love, joy, peace, goodness, gentleness, meekness, temperance. All those fruits that come with being saved. How about it today? How's your joy? If you're saved, why don't you ask the Lord to restore that joy if it's not beaming in your heart. If you've got joy today, you ought to thank the Lord. There's a lot of people that don't. Today. You can have joy because the spirit of joy is available. Let's all stand. Brother Ray, come get a song of invitation. <clears throat> well, they're coming to get a song and some are coming to pray. You just mind the Lord today. He's here. You have the spirit of joy. Maybe you need to give something to somebody. That'll help you with your joy. Maybe you need to appreciate the family you got both your relatives and your church family. I don't know. But I know one thing. Life's too short to live without joy. They're picking out a song. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we sure do love you. Thank you for the spirit of joy. Thank you for allowing us to come here today and hear about it. Now, Lord, I fear in a crowd this size there are some folks facing some things just like David did. And Lord, a lot of times we don't want to be transparent. We don't want folks to know some of the dark places we're dwelling in. Lord, we dress nice. We put on a smile. We do all those things. But inside, some may be hurting. God, I pray the spirit of joy would overwhelm them. Then, Father, I pray for those that aren't saved. Lord, they'd get saved so they know what joy really is all about. God, help folks today. Since my spirit, folks just need some help. Lord, help folks to mind the Lord. Maybe somebody here is real low and they just need somebody to come and give them some words of encouragement. God, send one of your youngins their way to encourage them. Maybe there's somebody here tonight or this morning. Lord, they're not joyful because they got bitterness in their heart. I pray they deal with that bitterness. Maybe it's envy against somebody and they'd go and repent. I don't know what's needed, Lord. 
I just know if your people truly had joy, the world would want what we got. So God, I pray that during this day of trying to manufacture joy, people would really have joy. God, get glory from this invitation. Help these on the altar. Help everyone here today. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.